morning everyone. Welcome back to Sarah Says. I thought today I'd do a little chitty chatty cozy Q&A type vlog. Give the Christmas a bit of a break because the last few vlogs, vlogs videos, I have to boil the kettle right now. And I know so many of you guys are anticipating a all the teens Christmas present ideas. I am hoping to get that ready for you next week. I have struggled a little bit. I haven't actually struggled with my children because I know my children, but I feel like some of the gifts for my children are not really generic gifts that everybody will love, like vinyls for like Isabel's record player. She loves books and things like that. So I know that's very specific to a person like you have to be interested in books to want to receive a book or you have to have a vinyl record player to receive a vinyl so I have struggled a little bit to get other um, gift ideas together but hopefully I will be able to get that live for you all next Monday anyway today is a Q&A I asked on my Instagram last night really late when I was like I might just do a Q&A tomorrow uh, what basically what some questions basically so I've just been through them all this morning there is a very leading question I have to say there's a leading question amongst them all uh, and you can probably all guess what that is it's regarding a little person <laughs> a very teeny tiny little person but we'll get into that after right we're going to I'm going to go through I've screenshot some of them so I'm going to go through the screenshots now and answer your questions. Okay, the first question is something vlogging has taught you. I thought this was a really cool question actually. I don't think we've ever had this question before. Maybe we have, I don't know. But something vlogging has taught me. One of the biggest things that not only has vlogging taught me, but also taught friends and family and people who are close to me, not necessarily close to me before vlogging but have become close to me during the time we vlogged so old friends new friends that we've made they all say the same thing it's like, it's like one of the first things they say to me and that is how ugly the world can be like how crazy the world can be and how ugly and nasty it can be and I was so ignorant and I wish I was still ignorant to some of those things as social media over the last 10 or so years has grown, so has so much nastiness and so much bitterness and anger towards pe towards strangers, just anger. And I'm not just talking from personal experience, I'm talking in general. Um, there's so many bitter, negative, nasty people out there who genuinely want to dedicate their lives to making other people feel bad and I never knew people like that existed like it's something that I say all the time like what on earth and it's something that my friends say so new friends old friends in fact even more so new friends that I make they're like whoa the world is so crazy like I never knew this existed yeah, other YouTube friends, but other YouTube friends, definitely. But I'm talking like, even like our neighborhood friends from here. They're all like, wow, this world is crazy. So it really has taught me that. And it's something that I never knew existed. I was ignorant to it. I knew people were bitter and nasty, but not to this extent. Um, and I, like I said, it's not just personal to me. It's just in general. We have obviously experienced it, but I am talking about just in general as well. Um, and that's definitely something that <laughs> vlogging and sharing our lives online has taught me. The next question is, would you guys ever do a meet and greet? So we have done meet and greets in the past and we'd love to do meet and greets in the future. And uh, this is actually a question that pops up all the time on our personalized video messages. Um, so I feel like I've answered this loads of times, but I haven't actually answered it on um, publicly like this. So we would love to do more meet and greets in the future. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as just, thanks babe. I don't Thank you. I've got a cup of tea. Oh yes, in my warm, cozy mug. Um, it's not just as easy as just coffee. coffee. <laughs> just, just like saying, oh, we're going to do meet and greet here. Hope to see you all there. There's, there is a lot that goes into meet and greet, security and safety wise, for you and us. 
so it does take a lot to organize the only meet and greet that we do have in place at the moment is the one with our Mila Reborn doll which we're hoping and planning around happening in March next year so in about three four months time there is still some Mila dolls available if you're looking for that last minute Christmas gift it's basically a collaboration if you don't know that we did with the amazing Mary Shortle we became extremely good friends with her and a whole wonderful family in 2017 when I bought Esme her first Reborn doll that vlog actually is our biggest earner at this time of year still, <laughs> still now every year, yeah still at this time of year. every Christmas like our money just I mean everyone's does on YouTube just because the way YouTube works and the way you get paid and the way ads work on videos not a lot of people know this but basically you get paid by the adverts at the start of the videos you don't control the adverts at the start of the videos this is going off on one and totally not related to the question, but just in case anyone's interested. You don't place the ads on the videos, you don't select how many ads go on the videos, you literally just click a button that says you allow your channel to be monetized, which means you allow companies to put adverts, YouTube to put adverts on your videos. That's all you do. You upload your video and you click, yes, I'm happy for the adverts to be on it. And you get paid for those adverts. Um, at this time of year, um, people, <laughs> We vlog daily anyway, but people who don't vlog daily start to vlog daily because their money just goes a lot, lot, lot higher than at any other time of the year because obviously adverts are trying to sell more at this time of year. So you get more adverts, but you also get paid more per advert. Totally forgot where I was going with this one, but my point was is that all of our Christmas videos from all of the years go crazy at this time of year. So not just like this year's Vlogmas, it's like Vlogmas from the last seven years that people are watching every single day over and over and over again and Christmas days from all the years, which um, I can't even remember what the point was about it. But yeah, that, that vlog anyway got mega views and that's why we became friends with Victoria. And we still have some baby reborn. It's like a collaboration with um, Victoria for the baby Mila doll. Um, so yeah, if you are interested, I'll leave a link in the description box down below and I know Victoria does payment plans and things We are getting quite close to Christmas now, so I'm not sure when her cutoff is But I'll leave a link to her website and our beautiful baby Mila doll And I think we might actually have one or two Prinnies left Because yeah, we got an extra stock of, of Prinny and I think they all sold out But I think she's recently said I found like an extra two, one or two, one or two also, Prinnies um, The meet and greet event is going to be amazing March. Yeah, it's gonna, so yeah. anyone that's interested in that, it is going to be so, so good It is, yeah, it's going to be great We had one in March 2000 and, uh, No, it wasn't March Yeah, it was March 2020 um, Last 2020. That was the last one we did and it was really fun. I'll leave a link anyway down below for anyone that's interested. Oh, is anybody else a slurper? I'm so bad at it. So, so bad. In fact, Chris laughs at how I drink. <laughs> he laughs at how I drink and I don't, I didn't even know I did it before I got with Chris, but I literally go. <laughs> I don't know why I do it. I don't know why, but it's something I've always done. Anyway, next question. Are the girls hard to buy for this year? In all honesty, no. And I always thought that as the girls got older, I'd really struggle. Now, they're not hard to buy for, but they definitely take a little bit more thinking. But in a way, I kind of feel like they're a little bit easier because they're able to tell me exactly what they were, they're interested in and exactly what they want. And I'm very lucky in that my girls are interested in things. I know sometimes when you have a teenager, they're interested in makeup and their phone and that's it. Not labeling all teenagers, I'm just saying some teenagers. Uh, but my girls are interested in things. Esme is still a very young 13 year old, which I love. And I'm pretty sure that's maybe something to do with homeschooling. Um, because she's not influenced by anyone else, which I really like. I don't feel like children should rush to grow up at all. I like to keep them for young for as long as they're happy to stay that way. And Esme's still into dolls. She's still, in fact, one of the other questions was still, do Isla and Esme still play dolls? Yeah, they do. They have sleepovers every weekend. They spend time watching movies, playing on Roblox, and also playing with dolls because they like to do that. And I love that about them. Um, and they've actually got a couple of doll type things for Christmas this year. Not only does Esme like to play with dolls with Isla, she doesn't play with them all the time, but she does enjoy it sometimes, like role-playing with them. 
but she likes to display them in her bedroom. So she's got shelves and she likes to collect them. So that's really lovely. So that means that Esme is quite easy to buy for. She's very creative and into crafts. So anything crafty, she absolutely loves. Isabel is just obsessed with reading. So she, her Christmas list were pretty much all books this year. So um, books, she's into vinyls and things like that. She's into clothes and she's able to tell me like she likes this, this and this. So I found her quite easy to buy for. Jason Miller, super easy. Um, and then Isla was probably my most difficult because Isla's at that in-between stage where one day she wants to be a little one and she wants to play and, and she's classed as the younger three. She wants to be in that bracket. And then the next day, she, she's not a younger one, she's older. She wants to be classed as the three older girls and she's the older one. So she's a little bit more difficult. She still does like toys, but she doesn't play with them all the time. But she's still a little bit young for really grown up things as well. And I don't like to push grown up things too soon. Like you've got a lot more Christmases with your children to buy like more grown up things. So I kind of like to save the younger thing, the older things until they are actually older. But no, I don't really find them difficult to buy for. I really need to cut down how long I'm answering these questions for. Have the girls, oh, hello, Mila. Hello, my little chubby chubby. What, Daddy didn't do a good job of looking after you, did he? Oh, he's here, look. <laughs> there you go. Have the girls ever expressed an interest in wanting to go back to school? No, they haven't. Isabel has with college. There's a lot of questions about Isabel and schooling. We'll get to those in a bit. Isabel wants to go to college. Esme, I can 100% guarantee pretty much. I mean, she could change, but I would bet anything on her never going back to school. She's not an academic type of girl. <laughs> Some people love academics. And they're amazing at maths and English and science and things. Some people don't love them, but they're still really good at them. Um, and some people really, really, really just don't like the typical academic type studies. Um, and they try really, really hard and they have to try really, really, really hard to get you know, to get that grade. And Esme falls in that bracket. She really tries, and she does really try. She's so good with homeschooling. She's got tutors. We've actually just enrolled them recently in a new um, online class thing. Uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that, but they do have tutors and we have just enrolled them into a new schooling program. Um, and she does really, really well. And she does her maths and her English. She's working on, what was she doing with Chris the other day? She's working on, oh my gosh, I can't even think of the word. What's that maths thing that everyone hates? Algebra, <laughs> algebra. Um, so she is, obviously she would be in year nine at school. So she's working, she's doing work at year nine. All of her classes are on year nine. Um, what, what my girls do basically is what they would be doing if they were in school. There's loads of different homeschooling options. You don't have to do that, you, you don't need to. I like to because I like to know that my girls are doing what everyone else their age is doing so that's just my personal preference so she's doing year nine work and she's doing amazing at that as well but I just know that she would not do as well in school because she did struggle a little bit when she was at school and not only did she struggle with like the academic side but she struggled with her confidence there was like a knock-on effect from her struggling academically with like her confidence and then having to feel like she needs to keep up with peers and I don't know, I just feel like she would do so much better at home and I know that every time if I've brought up, do you ever fancy going back to school? She has literally had a meltdown. Like she is not gonna want to go back to school. And then Isla, I'm not too sure. Whenever I, cause it's always me that brings it up. Like are you sure, sure you don't wanna go back to school? Because I always have mum guilt about stupid things that I shouldn't have mum guilt about but people on here, um, question me and question things and then it puts a seed in my head like oh my gosh really is that right and I know it's not but sometimes when I do get into a low moment thinking about that I do like ask the girls and they always say no. Isla's never um she's never a no way I'm never going back to school she's always like well maybe I will but I just I don't really want to right now that's always what Isla has replied. Esme's always like no. Isabel's like yeah I definitely want to go to college in September and Isla's always like mm, I quite think that I might like to go back to school, but I just don't want to right now. So maybe Isla will. I don't know. Um, that will be up to them. 
just staying on that subject, there's quite a lot of questions about Jace and Jace going to preschool or school or nursery, etc, etc, et and asking if he's ever asked to go. He's never asked to go because we homeschool, so he's never, he's too young to know that even school's like a thing. He does have a couple of friends here in our, I never know what to call where we live because it's not a town and it's not a village and in the area that we live in, basically. Hamlet. Hamlet. In the Hamlet. I don't feel weird calling it Hamlet. Anyway, um, he, uh, who do go to school and he understands that they go to school, but he's never asked to go to school. And I honestly, I don't, I always, I don't know how Jace, would, how do you think Jace would be at nursery? Because we're such a close family and all he's ever known is us all together every day. He's also a lockdown baby as well, so that's, again, yeah. extended on that. He's yeah, there. we were all, always together for as, it's all he's ever known. So I feel like just taking, being like, you know, you're going to school now and you're going to be there on your own all day long. I don't know how we'd do with that. We haven't actually made a final decision on whether Jace will go, will or won't go to school. Right now we're just playing it by ear and seeing how things go. But yeah, just, I don't know. It, it makes me feel weird and I don't know how he'd cope with that. So we've not really made a decision, basically, on Jason Miele. My legs are broken, so I've had to sit down a bit and move the camera. What made you change to reusable products? I've always wanted to use reusable nappies, especially. I did a vlog about it when I was pregnant with Jace. Um, and in all honesty, I was too scared. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It seemed really, really daunting to change to reusable products. And the startup cost as well was always a little bit, oh, I don't know if I can justify like that cost when what if it doesn't work? And it just made me a little bit nervous and so I always put off doing it. And then with Mila, I was just determined, like I really wanted to do it. Not only for, it wasn't even for the cost because by the time I started with Mila, I've probably, in fact, I've definitely spent more on reusable products than what I would have done if I'd have just kept buying Aldi nappies. <laughs> um, so it's not about the cost for me personally, but obviously I've got five children now and just the way that the world's going and like landfill and things like that, I was feeling like, oh my gosh, do we do enough? Like, are we, are we recycling in, enough? And look at all these nappies every day. And I don't know, I just, it made me feel better about myself knowing that we were doing something a little bit to help um, the planet, I guess and change into reusable nappies, reusable sanitary products. Reusable sanitary products are like so much more comfortable <laughs> in my opinion. So me and Isabel just absolutely love using reusable sanitary products. And then actually I ordered a pack for Esme as well for when she needs them. She doesn't yet, but for when she does, because she's also said she wanted to use those as well. And I just find them more hygienic and nicer to use. So that's that. And then reusable baby wipes. I use 90% of the time. I don't tend to use them when we're out and about, but I do use them when we're at home. And finally, reusable makeup removers I find kinder to your skin. Um, I do sometimes still use the pads. Like I'm not super strict on it, but I just, when I can, I like to. And it's basically just for those reasons, really. Just landfill and makes you feel a bit better about yourself. Someone's asked how many countries in total have we visited? Would you know the answer to that, babe? In total? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's gonna, we're gonna add them up right now. Okay, Chris just did a little count up and we got to 29. That was just a quick off the top of our heads. Yeah, I, I bet so. we I forgot think, a couple I think there. 29. 29. But not only, that's like 29 separate countries, but then we've been to multiple places in each country. So, for example, America. We've been to New York, Florida, and then like Spain. We've been to multiple places in Spain. Um, Egypt, been to multiple places there. Uh, but about 29 different countries, I think. Definitely 29. There might be a few more that we forgot at the top of our head. Are you looking on the map now? <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, no. No. So I think we've been to around 29 countries. Leading on from countries, someone's asked when we'll be going back to America. There's restrictions, unfortunately, in America right now, so we aren't able to go. But it is one place that I am desperate to get back to. We've got friends in America who we speak to all the time, who have been, how long have they been begging us to go stay with them? Oh, so long, years, absolutely. Four I think it's like, yeah, I was gonna say about four years. So that's the first thing we'll be doing as soon as we are able to visit America. We also, of course, want to take Jace back to, J not Jace, back to, we want to take Jace to Florida and to Disney World. We can't wait to do that. The girls are desperate to go back as well. 
And well, I really want to go... Route six, route six Chris is desperate to do Route 66, which is a dream that we've had since we got together, actually. So it'll be so amazing when we get to do that. And then um, I really want to go back to New York as well, and Isabel really wants to go back to New York. So America will be the best... I think we'll spend like a whole year doing America <laughs> as, soon as, the, as soon as we're able to, because there's just so many places in America that we want to go. This is a question that's popped up a little bit um, over seven years, actually, that we've been vlogging. Do you ever feel the constant filming may have a negative effect on your children's mental health? No. I don't feel like it will, mainly because if you think about our vlogs, the yeah, if you think about our vlogs, it's 90% of the time me, <laughs> it's 90% it's of, in fact, I've heard trolls um, in the past and I've actually definitely received messages in the past saying it might as well just be called the Sarah Ingham channel because it's only you on there and that's true, it is mainly me on this channel and I do mainly take charge of this channel because I feel like it's, her? Oh, sorry, yeah, I'm not even not. Yeah, sorry, I'm on Sarah Sage on our main channel, sorry, the Ingham family. Because it was it was me that set up the channel and it was it, it's what I would class as my job. So this is my job. It's my job to film every day. It's not Isabel's and Esme's and Isla's job to film every day. It's their job to do their schoolwork. Um so I don't feel like it's something that I should have to let them take responsibility for. Like, it's my responsibility to do this. I chose to do this job. And the girls are in the vlogs because obviously they're part of what we do. They're part of the family. But if they don't want to be in the vlogs, and there's loads of times in it, the girls are like, can we not film? Can you not film this? And we don't, we just don't film it. 99% um, of the time though, the girls want to film. They're like, can we film this today? Or, well, like I will say, can you film my outfit if I go get dressed? Or Esme says, will you come up to a bedroom today? Because I really want to show this on the camera. So I feel like actually it has a positive effect on them. It gives them confidence. And... It has given them confidence. It has given them a... Forward. Yeah, it has. I mean, only we know our children and we know the boundaries. And I know that lots and lots of lots of you guys feel like you know us and you're part of our family and you're our friends. And that's really, really lovely. But in reality... Only we really know our children, and so it's really difficult sometimes when people give opinions on some things that are just so far from the truth. Um, and I feel like if I feel like if we were doing like forced things every day, so for example, I feel like if we were forcing or we were expecting the girls to do challenges every day, or we have to do a challenge today, girls, because we have to vlog it, that's different or you have to do this skit today with us because we need to vlog something. Yeah, I agree. Then that would be different. That, that's giving them a responsibility that they don't really need. And that's never been our As channel. But that's never ever. been our channel. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's never been our channel. We never ever expect or force the girls to film anything. I take charge and I just film what we're doing and that's it. And that's no different to when we didn't vlog. So when we didn't vlog, we were known as a family that filmed everything because I want the memories growing up. <laughs> Um, and the girls love watching back the memories as well. So I do understand how some people might think that vlogging or filming for YouTube every day could have a negative effect on a child's mental health. But the way we do it, in my opinion, I'm no expert, but I know my children, um, I don't think it would have a negative effect on their mental health. If I did see it start having a negative effect on their mental health, then I would suggest they took a step back. Um, an example of that is Isabel. She, re she went through about two years of receiving messages. She didn't see them for two years because I stopped her going in them, um, saying how much weight she'd gained, how fat she was, um, whoa, you've gained so much weight, are you still healthy, how much do you eat, blah, blah, blah. She, got so she went for about a year and a half, two years of that. Do you remember after Jace was born? Yeah, of course. Um, and it was horrendous and that started to affect her and so I stopped, I had to control her Instagram inbox and she asked me to take over her comments for a while because she couldn't face them anymore and so she kind of took a step back. Um, so we do deal with things when we feel like it might be affecting them negatively. It's not like we just ignore it and crack on. Uh, we do deal with things behind the camera. We don't vlog about it because it's not relevant to the vlog. It's not going to bring anything to the vlog and it's not really it's a personal issue, so it's not something we want to vlog about. Um, I hope that answers that question. I feel like I've just gone off on one, but I, f I can understand basically how some people would think if we were forcing our children to do things every day, but the way we do it, I don't think it would have 
an effect on their mental health. You hear them out? The girls are arguing. Apologies if you can hear the girls shouting in the background. <laughs> How do you blog out negative comments about you and your family? I love your family. Thank you so much. Um, if this is a question we get asked daily, <laughs> pretty much, um, and it's a, and it's it's always the same answer. You don't look for negative comments. If you're ignorant to the comments, they don't affect you. If you don't know they're there, they don't affect you. Never ever ever look for anything that might be said negatively about you because it will affect you. Like I'm telling you, it will. You can be the strongest person in the world, but you read something that sucks about you and it and it's going to affect you in a way so just don't look for negative comments avoid them at all costs obviously because we monitor our we are our own social media so there is times when I'll go into my inbox or my inbox requests and they're usually so so lovely and I can read 10 that are really lovely and then I'll get one that says you're a mum and I'm like oh that's lovely and I'll just delete and block and I won't rise to it and nine times out of ten, I'm like, what an idiot. But then sometimes the ones that affect me the most are the lie ones. So the ones that are a lie um, or an assumption that's untrue, but spoken like it's real. Like, they really, really annoy me because I've been brought up to stick up for myself. Um, and so if I read something that's a lie about me, I want to say, what are you talking about? That's not true. What on earth are you lying for? Like, that's a lie. But that's not what you should do. <laughs> and I struggle with that sometimes. I do struggle with that. Like, when, whenever I stick up for myself on my own social media, my inbox every single time is crazy. It's so full of support. Yes, Sarah, you tell them. Stick up for yourself. Oh my gosh, yes. And then there's like, amongst the hundreds, one or two saying, you really shouldn't rise to it. Don't let them get to you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I actually wish I didn't now. Because it's true. You shouldn't rise to it. All they're expecting is a reaction. All they want is a reaction. And I know deep down that I should ignore it. I know I should. Um, but sometimes it's really difficult when you feel like you're completely being spoken about in an unjustifiable way. And that's, that, that's the ones that hurt me the most. I don't care when people give an opinion on me, like, you're a shit mum. I don't care if you think I'm a shit mum. I know I'm a good mum. I know I am. So those opinions don't matter. But it's when people say things like, it's so sad that you're depriving your children of an education. Because my girls get a better education than they would do if they were at school. I don't care what anyone says. They get a be better education at home than they would be getting if they were in school. They learn more with me at home. They are comfortable with me at home. They do more work with me at home. And they take more in and learn more with me at home, along with their tutors as well. So comments like, and they're ignorant as well. They're from people that don't understand homeschooling. Um, so those comments really annoy me. <laughs> or comments like, it's so sad that um, Isabel has no friends. Isabel's out all the time with friends. You can't say that you see Isabel every single day in our vlogs because you don't, because she's often out. She's 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 often out. She's in fact she's got an amazing personal life right now. She's very got some exciting things going on in her personal life. Um, she's got a good group of friends, and she's. Well, I'm not saying anything else because it's not my place to say, but she's very very happy right now in her personal life. That's all I'm saying. So those type of comments, just because they're so unjustifiable, do hurt a little bit. Not hurt, that's not the right word. They do irritate, they make me want to bite back. Ignorant. They're ignorant, yeah, but it makes me want to, makes me want to say you're like, what, why? Ugh. It makes me frustrated. What was the question? So that's how I block out negative comments. I just don't look for them. We actually got given a very good piece of advice from a very big YouTuber when we, were much small when we were a much smaller channel and that was to never ever look for negative comments and never ever ever um never seek them out basically don't 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 entertain them don't look for them because basically what i've just said and so we took on that advice didn't we and we never have done um so that's basically how we deal with it because when you don't look for it, it never you don't never there yeah you, know, you don't look for it you, it. you don't you know, know it, it so. and the best way to not know is to not see it so um that's definitely the best way to deal with it vlogmas plans and are we getting a christmas vlogmas intro this year <laughs> babe let's be honest about this intro this vlogmas intro well, actually, it's been just, a nightmare. Just the, the proofs have just come through. They look really good. So. Oh, okay. So, so it's been hard this year, and it's our fault because we left it a bit late. Um, 
basically to get this vlogmas intro it's a it's not just a quick can you make me one up and i'll pay you a tenner they actually cost close to a thousand pounds to get made and not only that but they take how long like six eight weeks a long time yeah it takes six to eight weeks um and we just kept putting it off this year, didn't we? We, just, well, we weren't even putting it off. We, would, we weren't putting off doing it. We were just like, yeah, we need to get that sorted this week. But we just had so much else going on that we just never got round to th sitting down and brainstorming a creative idea because we went from just having our creator who does them for us doing us a general one to us wanting to decide what it was and to have our own touch on it. So like when we introduced the van and the van blowing and the car blowing up that year, uh, we wanted to have creative control over it. And this year, nothing major. Like, we had Mila born one year. We had the van trip the other year. We had the car blowing up the other year. And because I couldn't, we couldn't, oh, the house move. But because nothing major had happened this year, we were a bit like, what are we going to do this year? No, not nothing major had happened. Nothing no, disastrous. No, nothing disastrous or nothing... No, it is nothing like, major. Like, like, like we didn't buy a new house or we didn't get a no, new car. Or we didn't buy a new van or the van didn't blow up or anything big that could make a funny... New to introduce yeah, nothing right, new yeah. to introduce. That's what I mean. So it just took us a while to brainstorm an idea. And then by the time we did brainstorm an idea, it was like, it's a, it's a bit too late now, guys. I'm afraid to start doing that. So we've got an idea now. We've, we're working with them at the minute. We've just got the proof through today. Yeah. Um, so it will be up on December 1st. And hopefully you guys will love it. With regards to actual vlogmas, we actually sat down last night and booked a few things. You alright, Izzy? Yeah. Um, we've got a really exciting December. It's pretty booked up already, isn't it? I think we've only got like... We've got like two or three days. Free. We've only got like a few days free now in December. Because I really wanted this December to be cramp-packed of happy, fun, festive madness. So vlogmas this year is definitely going to be a good one. Did you celebrate Christmas at home pre-YouTube? I do understand that things were different financially. Okay, number one, yes we did. Always celebrate, celebrate Christmas at home before YouTube. But actually, we've been doing YouTube for seven years now and in the last 10 years, we've actually spent seven of those at home. I think everyone always presumes that we're always away at Christmas, but we've only ever had three Christmases away from home, have we not? Yeah, three. Three Christmases and that's it. Yeah. We've only ever done Christmas away from home three times in the last, well, forever, oh, no. ever. What have you smashed? Nothing but other people <gasps> has gone on the phone. There must have been fake scam ones. Because they've just, they're destroyed. Oh, me and Chris went in the hot tub last night with some mulled wine. It was so lovely. Oh, we had Christmas really songs on. Isabel watched, Isabel and Esme watched Milo and Jay's. Me and Chris got in the hot tub. We had Christmas music on and mulled wine. And it's put the mulled wine mugs, metal ones, in the, in the dishwasher. And it's rubbed off all the copper colour. You're not buying new ones. No, they still work the same. No. Anyway. <laughs> So yeah, we did spend it at home and I actually loved spending Christmas at home and I never wanted to go on holiday for Christmas. I never wanted Christmas away from home because I didn't feel like it would feel like a Christmas. I feel like, I felt like it would feel like a holiday. But I was so wrong. Christmas at Forest Holidays is completely magical and amazing. And I love it. And we almost booked it this year. I wasn't fully on board. It was over £3,000. Um, was that for a week or five nights? Four nights? That's for a week. One week? Yeah. Well, still, still crazy price. Chris was like, no, it's, uh, he, it's usually me that's tight. No, it's usually you that, no, it's usually you that's tight, sorry. But Chris was like, yeah, but don't you think it'd just be magical? We didn't get to it last year and it's, we didn't get to it either before, did we? Well, the, the, the first year we didn't do it is because we got locked down. So we were we locked do down. We booked it, but yeah. we were in lockdown then, so yes. we had to cancel so it. We got refunded for that. We got refunded. Last year, we just decided to have it here because it was a new house. Yeah, last year we wanted it at home as well. Yeah, last year I wanted it at home. It was my new house and I didn't want to like, I wanted my first Christmas in my new house. And then this year, because of the price, I was I was just been tight. I was just like, it's just such a lot of money. And I just don't feel like people would appreciate, well, not that we do things for people any anyway, but I don't know. I felt like it was right to do it at home this year. Anyway, it sold out, so we, we're doing it at home. No, it, was, it wasn't sold out. It wasn't until Chris Ramsey. I was like, right, I'm booking it, I'm doing it. And, and I was like, no, you know, I was in the bath upstairs. I was like, no, you're not doing it. We need to talk about it some more. Yeah, but she wasn't and then he was on the phone, like, what? It's sold out. Like, it, was a, it was a playful no. It wasn't like, no, no. It was like, no, don't do it. Just absolve me of the responsibility <laughs> and do it. But no. don't tell me you're doing it. It wasn't. <laughs> But then it was sold out. But then so. I was like shouting out, no, babe, we need to talk. And then she went, oh, no. And then Chris went, oh, no, it's gone. It was available last night. And then he went, oh, no way. And I was like, oh, they've sold out. So I ran home. But I think that's the right decision anyway, because I just, it's such stupid money for, it would pay for the whole of Christmas. 
just for a few nights somewhere that else. Would be, it'd be really magical. Chris just won't. Chris is still gutted. He lives for the moment, and he's all about like, you know, who knows what'll happen next Christmas? Who knows if we'll still be blooming here next Christmas? You never know what's going to happen. Can't ever take a day for granted. So he's all about living in the moment, and I'm all about yeah. But we've got a hot tub outside now, twinkly Christmas. And how nice was it last night? Yeah, what well, nice. Last it night. was lovely. So we're staying at home for Christmas. It's just I've just took three minutes answering that question. It should have been a 10 second thing. We're staying at home in December, but we are staying at home. Chris is saying you need to specify that we're staying at home for Christmas Day, but that doesn't mean we're at home all of December. No. Wait, wait. Oh, okay, that's enough. Okay, as Izzy's getting older, how do you feel about the impending girls' holidays abroad, nights out, etc.? I can't wait. I think everyone always presumes that I'm this overprotective mum that, like, wants to wrap Isabelle up. And actually, that's Chris. He's, he's struggled more lately with the things Isabel's been out doing than I have and I don't mean struggled in a respect that is like she can't she can't do this but have you heard from Isabel yet is she okay you know constantly worrying I think that's probably normal for a dad but I honestly can't wait I, I think it'll be so good for her. I can't wait for her to start college I can't wait for her to get a group of like college friends and start going out more even though she goes out now I, I mean like proper like going out going out Chris is like she's only 17 I'm like mate I was in nightclubs at 17 yeah, but we were wrong. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, but everything I say, everything, like, Isabel says, I was like, but I was doing that at her age. She's like, yeah, but we were wrong to do that. Babe, I was doing stuff at 14. That I exactly. Never been doing. Exactly. And my would die exactly. If they knew about. It's like. So, it, I'm, so we're <laughs> lucky right now, but it doesn't make it right, but we, we didn't. It wasn't right at all. Yeah, I, I honestly can't wait for her. I'm really excited for her. She, another question was about her driving yes Isabella's is taking she hasn't taken driving lessons yet but we have sent off for a provisional license I don't know if there's some sort of delay on those coming back because it's been ages but um I'm really excited for her to get her own car so that we don't have to drive her around everywhere why are you laughing I'm not <laughs> Chris is not he's nervous but I think she'll be great not fully ready for the world yet no she's not she's so ready Isabella yeah bless her but I'm really excited I can't wait I'm really 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 excited that she for her to um, have a car and get that, and get her own freedom and to be able to go off and do what she wants <laughs> and get out of her bedroom because Isabel's a home girl, isn't she? She's definitely a home Isabel girl. Won't leave her bedroom if she That's what I mean. Isabel's a home girl, and it, and it worries me sometimes that and I shouldn't worry. I should be grateful because I'm sure they'll just flick a switch and she'll be off all the time, and I'll be thinking, I wish she were back in a bedroom. Exactly. I know that, so I am treasuring it and cherishing it and not pushing her too much. But I am. I do have to push her sometimes too. Oh, legs, legs, legs said. I do. Ha I've got such a bad angle. I do have to push her sometimes to get out of her comfort zone and go do things. She's going to this concert next week, is it? Yeah. She's going to a concert with a friend next week that she's like, I might not go. And I'm like, no, you are going. You're going to have the best time, Isabel. And I know it's just because she's nervous, so. It's a proper, like. It's a proper, it's a proper, proper like, mosh metal, concert. It's a proper mosh game. Yeah. It's going to be well good. It's going to be good. She's going to have the best time. And I know that when she goes, goes, when she goes and comes home, she's just going to be so hyped. Isn't she? She'll, she's going to have had the best time and she's going to be so happy. So yeah. I'm really excited for Isabel. It's a really exciting part. Do you think it's a really exciting stage in her life? Like just becoming like 17, 18 and yeah, I can't wait. Would you seriously consider upgrading to bus life? Uh, yeah, man. I'd still never get rid of our van because you need to, I feel like... She would tell them that, do you know what? We actually, we actually... <laughs> We actually did something a bit spontaneous a while back. We actually bought an RV, a massive one. A big American one. A big American one. Actually left hand drive American. Left hand drive American. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna insert the picture because we might I've got a vlog we vlogged doing it. Um but we didn't feel like it was a good time to share any news like that. But now that we've decided against it, that's why I'm sharing this news. Um because there is no news. <laughs> But it was, it had a washer, well, like, this is how big, we still don't know, yeah, we, we don't we're, know, we're, we just... We're, 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 I know, we can't... There's a couple of issues with it, basically, that we need to have resolved. Yeah. And no other results after Christmas, till we can make a decision. Yeah. Finally, basically. Yeah. What um, but it's just the most insane, it's, it's not a bus, but it's as big as a blooming it's bus. Bigger, it's, it's got a washing machine it's and a dryer a coach, in it. Basically. It's a coach. <laughs> no, it's just a big American Avi. Right. You know those where the sides come out? It's one of those, um, and it's got a bedroom at the back, and it's just massive, and it's just, it's got a fire, electric fire in it, like the one we've got here in the kitchen, and a massive TV that, like, 
come, it's just really good. It's really, really nice RV. Um, but we decided against it for a couple of reasons. Well, we haven't fully decided against oh, it. Oh, I know. Every time we're I think still, about it, I feel angry. We, like, oh, what if... We've still got money on it, so we're we'll waiting until after Christmas. Yeah, we have still got a deposit that we paid on it. Um, but we, we were just trying to... Would it be... Oh, I don't know. Anyway, we would definitely consider trading... Not trading, but also doing a bit of bus, coach, RV life. Um, someone's asked for ideas for a baby girl's first birthday. I'm not going to do that in this vlog because I did actually just, not last week, but the week before, or the week before that, do a toddler, young child Christmas gift guide, which is pretty much the same thing. So if you go back two or three videos, then there's a Christmas gift guide for young children, which I'm sure there'll be a few ideas on that for your baby girl's first birthday. But I hope you all have a wonderful day celebrating. I have recently started homeschooling my six-year-old. Where do you get your printouts from? Uh, we don't often do printouts that much anymore, do we? But you can get good printouts from um, Twinkle. Twinkle have some really good resources, especially for a six-year-old. Amazon do. Amazon, yeah, we do use Amazon actually all the time. Amazon do an amazing homeschool section that's free. And you can download, are they like full-on textbooks, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're like full-on textbooks. And they're really good if you go onto Amazon and they're free as well. So we do it's use that a lot. On Amazon, it's like yeah, but it's Amazon. You just have to Google Amazon homeschool, homeschool yeah. resources. It'll come up. Yeah, Google Amazon homeschool resources. They're amazing. Um, BBC Bite Size is also a really good um, structured learning website. Oak Academy. Oak Academy we've used before as well. Um, there's so many online resources. If you Google it, so many will come up and they're all really, really good. You'll be able to find these one that suits ones, you. Yeah, these are just the free ones. Yeah. Uh, Twinkle, I think you have to pay, but there are some free resources on Twinkle. Um, but good luck! Home education is the best, best thing ever for some, some, some children. And there will definitely be bumps along the way and you'll definitely have mum guilt sometimes. But ride those waves because you will see a massive change in your child. And I'm sure that you'll both absolutely love it. There's a lot of questions regarding Isabel and educating and then a few, um, a few people um, asking, is Isabel doing college work now or is she still doing school work even though she's finished year 11? I don't know if that was like a funny type of comment or just a general question. Hopefully it was just a general question. But there is a lot of questions regarding Isabel's education. So Isabel's working towards more GCSEs. She took five. A lot of people also asking how many GCSEs did you take? And she took five because that's how many you need to get into college and that's all you need. You don't need 11 GCSEs. You just need to get good grades to get into college, which is what Isabel took her five for. She did amazing in three of them. She did outstanding in her fourth one, which was English. She got a nine, which you cannot get better than a nine. And I knew she'd get a good grade in English because she was absolutely buzzing when she came out of the exam. I was not expecting it to be a nine. It's like bigger than an A star. You can't get a better grade. So, and then in one, she did good, but she wants, but she felt like she could do better. Um, so she's retaking that one. Um, it's not that she did bad in that exam, but she actually missed out some of the questions and she felt really gutted that she'd missed out the questions. She'd missed out a whole page of questions. And then she's also retaking another two exams just to keep her brain ticking over till she starts college. She wants to do in college, in case anyone's interested. Um, interested English, um, psychology, sociology, and criminology. Um, so I hope that answers Isabel's education questions. Also, I did just want to add on that as well, because going back, is Isabel still doing schoolwork even though she's left year 11? There's no age on when you can stop doing GCSEs. A 45 year old can go ahead and do some GCSEs if they want to. She only needed to do five and that's why she did the five and it's very typical for homeschool children to do five GCSEs to get them into college. Um, but she's still doing that now because she, she wanted a gap year. When I say a gap year, I don't mean like a year of not doing anything. I think I maybe said that wrong when I first said it. I just meant a year back from college. Not going to college, basically. Not going to college for a year, yeah. Um, but we did say obviously you need to do something though in that time. So. Not only is she doing the G extra two GCSEs that she doesn't really need, but she's doing anyway, but she's also doing bits of college work, not like an actual college course, but just like studying on the subjects that she's going to be studying when she goes to college. 
Does Jace still always have his dummy? No, Jace doesn't actually have any dummies, but he does. We do have dummies around the house because we, oh, we're still desperate. Well, we're not desperately trying to get Mila anymore because she's over a year old now. She doesn't need them, but we were trying to get Mila to take a dummy, but she never took to it. And if Jace ever finds one, he puts it in his mouth and just thinks that it's the best thing ever. So he, he literally loves it so much, but he's not addicted to dummies. He doesn't need dummies. If if we threw them all out tomorrow, he probably wouldn't even ask. It's just if he sees one, then he'll just be like, "Wow, I found a dummy." No, I think it's hilarious. Like he's he thinks it's hilarious. Yeah, he thinks it's like he's won the jackpot. Do you give yourself a budget for each child, and does it change per year? Have we ever budgeted at Christmas? No, I just cringe. <laughs> my sister does. Me and my sister are very different like that. She has a budget. A certain amount for each child and so when they've had their certain amount that's it they're done we've never budgeted for Christmas and I'm not just talking about now that we've maybe got a little bit more money because of YouTube I'm talking about ever we, we've never done it and I don't really know why we've ever done it it's just because to me it's more when they were younger it was more about their piles looking similar sized rather than the money been the same amount and I and, and there's no right or wrong I'm not saying I'm right in doing that and I'm not saying I'm wrong in doing that it's just what a parent prefers to do and for me personally it was more about their piles looking the same but as they got older it was more about them it's more about them constant not worrying about how much was spent on the other sibling or how big the other sibling's pile is it's just concentrating on what they got are they happy with what they got nothing else matters then um and for that reason, I just, we, we, I couldn't tell you how much we've spent on any Christmas, ever. Because I just buy what we can afford. And if we can't afford it, I don't buy it. And if we can afford it and they want it, I'll buy it. Um, and I never add up the amount because I would probably cringe nowadays. <laughs> I never add up the amounts. I just, they give me a list of what they want and I'll buy whatever I can buy off their lists and I'll buy all of the list if I can buy all of the list or I'll buy half the list or whatever and for me Christmas is not about like you had 101 pound but you had 105 so I really need to go spend another four pound on you it's never been about that for me and it's it's just I don't know it's just about making each child happy and and you know, making sure each child's got something that they've asked for. So I've never budgeted, I've never thought deeply about the money. Even when we didn't have a lot of money, we still always just buy what we can afford to make Christmas magical and special. And I, I feel like, for me, I feel like I'd just worry if there were a, a budget on knowing how much I'd spent. So it's just something we've never done. Is there one present you've been eyeing up for Christmas? Me? Not you, me. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the one you have been. Yeah. What? <laughs> Ew, why are you looking at me like that? No, I'm not. I asked for that every year, but no, I'm not that. <laughs> oh my god. It's a good job this is on Sarah says. Well, I always ask for you wrapped up in a bow, don't I? You are the most cringiest husband I've ever known in my whole but, life. Give but over. Santa's never once brought me in, unfortunately, so I've given up this year. This year I just set off for a little. A little. A little like, £20 stick or whatever. You know, them things. A little. Little plus sign on it. Oh, you're so cringy! <laughs> oh, he's talking about babies. You're so cringy. Is that? Oh yeah. So me, um, I'd really like. Uh, I'd really like a Tiffany necklace. Chris bought me a Tiffany necklace on my thirtieth birthday, and I absolutely I loved feel, it. I still feel bad about Milan as well. We, we went to Milan and we sell them in Milan. And Chris was like, do you know what, I'm going to buy you it, let's go back. And we walked back to the shop, I was so excited, it was closed. <laughs> and we were only in Milan one day. Which is not a big deal. It wasn't, it's probably a good thing. My birthday's in December as well, it's on the 13th, so I kind of get like two Christmases. Two presents, days. It feels really cute, cool. Feels really cool. But um, I would really like a Tiffany necklace, but they, I, I don't really care if I don't get one. But I would like the same one that I got on my 30th. Very quickly, have you got any plans for next year? Yes, we've got big plans for next year. Um, it would be amazing if we could go to America next year, but who knows about that. But aside from that, we do have very big plans starting early next year, actually. So keep your aisles, aisles, eyes peeled for that. What are you most looking forward to for Christmas time? Family cosy times, games nights, um, Christmas morning stockings. I absolutely love doing stockings on our bed. It's one of my favourite times. Christmas Eve, my favourite days, and Christmas days out. I absolutely love Christmas days and trips out. They're my favourite at this time of year. <laughs> this one's for you, babe. 
Why is Chris touching your hair constantly lately? It's so cringy. <laughs> I love, I love, I love how like a man and wife showing any sort of contact or affection is cringy. <laughs> um, Chris has always, always, always been um, a touchy person. So he likes to be very close. I'm the opposite, aren't I? I'm the opposite. Because I don't know if it's like the way I was brought up or what, but I am quite happy to just sit on my own. Chris you, likes you to sit. But when you want love. You're like a I'm like a cat. You want love, I want love when you I want love, but otherwise get off me. Um, I am very much like that, but Chris is the opposite. He's very like he he would literally sit hugging all day long, or like when we're watching movies, like he'll be like hugging, hugging, and like want to hold hands. I'm like, no, nope, get off my hand. I'm too hot. Get off me. So he always settles for bless him. Like, either t I'll put my legs over him and he'll just tickle my legs because they're just so relaxing. Ah. He'll rub my feet or he'll play with my hair because I like the feel of people pulling my hair at the bottom like that. It feels so nice in your head. So, Chris has... A tingle, yeah. Chris has always done that, our whole 16-year relationship. Um, in fact, you do that, like, every single night until I fall asleep. <laughs> Makes us sound like the cringiest couple that's ever, doesn't got, it? That's why I've got, like, a massive bicep on one arm and not on the other <laughs> That's why he's got a super strong turbo arm. <laughs> he's got one of those most turbo arms because he does just literally pull my hair and to come back to fall asleep every single night. So I'm sorry if that's cringy. We'll try not to do that on the vlogs anymore. No, we'll step it up. We'll step it up. <laughs> Did you ever find out what triggered your cold sores? Um, no, I didn't. And I actually haven't had a cold sore for how long? Oh, don't curse yourself. For so while. long. Every time I mention it, I get one. Did you get one but in the summer? No, in the I've not had a cold sore for so long. I don't. I feel like. Like maybe tiredness, stress, because I haven't really been that tired or stressed lately, have I ever? I don't really know. Um, but yeah, tiredness, stress, when I'm worried about something, seems to trigger them. And the sun, although I didn't get one at all in summer. I've not had one for such a long time. They are so... What's the... Is deliberating the right word there? Debilitating. Debilitating, that's yes. it. They're so debilitating, they're horrible. They control and like control your whole life when you've got one, they're the most horrendous thing. So if you do stuff with them, then I literally sympathize with you. The best thing that I found worked for me was the Aura Gel One Touch ointments. It's basically, when you look at the instructions on the back, because they're so expensive and you can only get them in America, it is pretty much just 70% alcohol rubbing gel. So 70% alcohol rubbing gel. Get some of that, which you can buy in the UK. Which you can buy in the UK for like fiver, and you get like a liter bottle. So what I did was I get some of that, I pop it on a cotton bud, you know the cotton buds, and I press it on, rub it, rub it, rub it, and then it goes within a day. So that's what I would recommend. Um, I'm not recommending it actually. So I don't recommend it because I'm not a doctor and I'm not an expert or a pharmacy. But that's just what I do. It, work it so works for me. Nice. Don't do it without speaking to your pharmacist. <laughs> It's what works for me. How do you help Isabel look after her mental health? Talking, talking, talking. A lot of talking. And making sure you give them one-on-one -on -one time. I have done that actually over the last couple of weeks by taking each older girl out for a special day out with me, which has been the best and they absolutely loved. But you don't have to do that. Just going up to a bedroom for half an hour at some point during the day um, so you can have a chat about things. And really. likes to go out for drives with me and put a little music on really loud. Heavy metal music. That's around. true, yeah. Um, and just head back out and go out for a bit. Yeah, she does often say, do you want fans going out for a drive? And so Chris will take her out for a drive because they like that loud music that's like screaming and I really don't, I don't cope, cope well with that. <laughs> so they sometimes go out for a drive and they'll just drive and have the music on blasting. And she really enjoys doing that. With me though, it's more, ch more chatting and talking and just, Isabel, Isabel's, there isn't anything uh, Isabel's very open with me. I know a lot. She's not. It's good to be like that. I don't that. mean too open. I don't mean that. I mean she is she, very open. She has though. no verbal yeah. boundaries. Yeah. None of our she children do. Shares. It's because of how close we all are, but none of our children do. They share one. I'm like, whoa, you should keep that to yourself. But um, Isabel's very open with me. I know everything that's going on in her life. I know all of the things that she might be worrying about. We talk about them often. I know the exciting things that are happening and how she feels about things. I know intimate. Yeah, all of them. To be fair. Yeah, all of them. I let Esme and Isabel never stop talking. Talking. Like yeah, that. and I feel like that's, that's and I, I feel like that's because <laughs> of how much we've 
spoke to them growing up and made time to sit down and chat with them and I feel like that's that's a really good way to support your child mentally um because they can be open with you and they know that they can come to you with anything Isabel can come to me with the most embarrassing story she's ever told anyone and she knows that we'll both sit there rolling and laughing and she can come to me with the most heartbreaking news she's ever received and she knows that we'll both sit there and cry you know there's no boundaries um, and I think that's a good thing and that's the best way that you can support your child. Do your girls still have their LOL dolls? And do Esme and Isla still play dolls together? They're both yes, here. Esme's yes. going. <laughs> do, don't you? Yes, do. Actually, for Christmas I've asked him for one of the, the big la 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 loops. Look, I said that, yeah. yeah Esme I'm wants a la la loop. See, one and of them really big ones with the massive heads. And I'm asking you. for na 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 surprises. As well. Ooh. <laughs> but yeah, they do still enjoy playing together and I absolutely love that about them. What's the hardest part about opening up your life on YouTube? Definitely the judgment, definitely the assumptions and definitely the lies that are made up about you. Um, I find it really, I've spoke previously in another question about this a little bit, but it's definitely the thing that I struggle with the most. Um, I feel like sometimes people think that because they've seen a 15 minute roundup of your day, they presume that that's all that's happened in that day. Um, and actually another thing is that they don't realise how much, I hate talking about this because it always triggers so many people, but I don't know why. But there is a lot of hard work that goes into daily vlogging. There's a reason a lot of daily vloggers stop daily vlogging. It's not because they're just like, oh, I just don't fancy that anymore. It's because it's hard work. It is a lot of work to do. And I'm not, and I hate it because people are always like, yeah, well, you want to do a, 20, a 12, 12 hour shift in a and &E. I'm not belittling other people's jobs and how much work goes into other people's jobs but for example if I've had 12 hours sleep but I feel tired that doesn't mean no if I've had six hours sleep sorry and I feel tired that doesn't mean someone else who's had 12 hours sleep is not allowed to feel tired you know their, their feelings are still the same and I feel like it's the same with this so many people get so angry when you say like YouTube is hard no, no it's not all you do is sit on your butt and film what you're doing no you don't you don't it's just so much ever. there's so much ever, Sorry, else so I know fire. but there's so much else that goes on behind yeah. the scenes and it's it's not just about I don't know um I think it, that misconception basically that misconception of how much work goes into daily vlogging and then also the assumptions that are made up about you. Someone's asking for stocking filler ideas. I will do a stocking filler gift guide on here. That's actually a really good idea. I'll do that very soon. Someone's asked, can you not be more kind and giving to your viewers as you get so much? What do you want? <laughs> we actually have done giveaways in the past. They never work. So many people try and scam you. Um, we've done this on our main channel. So many people try and scam. I remember we've done it about three times. Do you remember when we did all the giveaways? And then you'd say you'd won and then so many people emailed saying that's me and then you could never work out who the actual winner was. Yeah, it, um, it does make it really difficult and it just seemed more hassle than it's, than it's worth doing. How different would your life be if you never started YouTube? Would you have had Mila and Jace? I have always said that the biggest gift you guys have given me is Mila and Jace because we would not have been in a position to have any more children had we lived had we not started and taken off on YouTube. Mainly for the cost. We'd finished at Isla because of the cost. And I'm not talking about like the nappies and the clothes. I'm talking about cars. We'd have had, when you go from three, from, sorry, when you go from three to four children, it's the logistics of like cars and bedrooms. Our house was not big enough for four children. We had a three bedroom house, but one of those rooms was a box room. And so if it had been a boy, which actually Jace was, um, he would have obviously taken over that room, but then that would have meant that Isabel, as a 17, 18 year old, would be sharing with a 10, uh, Isla, who's 10, 11. Um, and I just, I don't know, it just, um, and so I feel like we wouldn't have had more children, would we? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're so annoying. <coughs> um, yeah, so the biggest gift that we ever got from YouTube is Mila and Jace, because we were in a position to buy a better car, with more seats, we were being we were able to buy a new house with bigger rooms, more bedrooms, and we did want you did want more children. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted more children as well, but I was content with the three girls. But I'm so thankful, like that we got Jason Mila. And then the most asked question on this whole thing is literally when are you having another <laughs> baby? It is literally the most asked question. And I hate answering this question because I have eyes burning into the side of my <laughs> face right now. Um, 
I'm, <laughs> and there's actually people asking like, I've got five and I'm considering six because I don't like odd numbers, which is literally playing on my. Yeah, exactly. Um, how, how far are you coming I'm from? happy. What? 90, 90, 10. Every yeah. single day <laughs> for about 10 months, maybe a 12, maybe a year, Chris has asked for another baby. Now, I've never known a man to be as broody as what Chris is. Like, I know that men obviously crave babies and want babies, but Chris sits up on a night researching prams for a baby that I'm not even pregnant with. He literally, what, what are you doing, feeling that face for? I'm not, I'm not pulling that face. He literally wakes me up on one, yeah, it's like, good morning, yeah, and I'm like... Richard, all the positives, that like, you can look at this new pram, you can get love, look at this new thing, you can get this He's new like, bag. you can buy as many clothes as you want, <laughs> look at this changing bag I found last night. Like, he is... I have never known somebody who become so obsessed with having... A, like, I don't even feel like I've ever been as obsessed as you are right now. Like, it consumes like your whole day. It's because, it's because, right? It genuinely consumes his life. Yeah, because, yeah but because... Well, number one, um, for a few reasons. Basically, uh, I, I think that an older three, as, Isabel, as Mayala, and a younger three, is so freaking cute. Um, you can't have a baby because you think no, that's... No, but no, no, it's not that. Basically, I, my thinking is that I, I really want Jason Miller to have another playmate. So, that, so, we ha so the trio, Esme, Isabel and Isla, are perfect. And they've been amazing. And I really want Jason Miller to have that too. Not only that, but I would, I would, part of me would love to try one last time. I, I wouldn't want any more than one more. But one last yes, time. Yes, you, you say that. Look, no, be honest with yourself. I know you're saying that. But if I was down and I was like, should we just go to 10? I had, what would yeah, you I say? Would, no, I would, I would say yeah, definitely. Only because... I would never. The, the, listen, I'm not because I'm irresponsible, but because we can, we can afford it and we've got the room. That's the only reason I would do that, right? That's the, re that's the reason I would do that. But the main thing that I really want one more is because um, I, I either would love to give Jace a brother, try to, and if that didn't happen then it would be magical to give Mila a sister. Because one by the time... She's got three. No, yes, but by the time Mila is old enough to play and interact with them in that way, Isla will be the youngest and she will be too old she to just, care. She Isla just said to me this old. morning, Mum, you do realise that when Mila's five, I'll be 14. Yeah, and Isla won't care about hanging out with Mila who's five. Like, I she mean, will. She, yeah, of course she will. She'll be lovely to her, like Isabel is now, right? But in reality, <clears throat> Mila will not have anyone that's close to her age to be like girly with and I would love to eat, I'd love to be able to give Mila a sister so she could have someone to be girly with when she grows up the same way the older three have had or I would just literally die to be able to give Jason a brother so it's win-win for me, it's a boy Okay, right? but, but how about this though, how about when we get that boy and we've got the boy and we're like, oh my gosh, Jason's gonna have a brother <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, no, but Jason's got a brother now Mila's not got a sister well, if you're what? down, then I'll do that. No, but I won't be down, no, that's not, the point. That's the point now. I would not, like, I'd be completely content at that point with six. Like, an even number. I like the even number as well. And I'm just, I'm also not ready to not see any babies in this house. Like, I love the baby stage. And Mila's at that stage now, that's my favourite stage. And I'm not ready to say goodbye to that. I know, but don't you feel like... Like a lot of parents feel like that. Yeah, of course. Like all parents don't want to give up the baby stage. <laughs> yeah, of course. But then but they do, and yes, they eventually yeah, grow. Yeah, there's lots of reasons why why people also do stop having babies for financial reasons or lifestyle reasons. But we have no excuse as far as that goes right now. We've you know we're financially stable. We've got the room. We've got the lifestyle that could, that is perfect for having another baby. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't know. I just. What do you mean? Like home, we're all yeah, at home. we're home all the time, and we, we can we can do it. You know, we're, we're good to go. So that's why. I, and you're young enough. This is this is the discussions we have daily. By the way, I don't know why this has turned into a discussion between <laughs> me and you. It's supposed to be a Q and A. No, I just don't want people to think I'm a weirdo. Just constantly wanting you to get pregnant. It's not that. I just I, I want. I really want to give Milo and Jace the same experience that all the three have had. Or, I mean, or even more special because if Jace had a brother, it'd just be magical. And right now as well. They're at the perfect age where the age gap would be good. Yeah, this is the thing with Chris as well. It's like right now, like right, right this minute yeah, now. We need a baby gap, now. Because you can't. Cause <laughs> if you leave it any longer, though, the age gap between Jace and a boy, baby boy, if it was a boy, would be it start to get a little bit bigger. Right now, it's, it'd be perfect. And the same with Mila. If it was right now, the age gap would be perfect. So I don't know. It's when for me, it's like a no-brainer. If you were down, I'd be like, let's do it right now. And if I'm not down, then you're just gonna grind me until I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm only joking, I don't want anybody to start even like hating on Chris as well because he does have this discussion with me every single day. Um but he doesn't but Sarah's open to the discussion. He's not, 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 not like well you kind of are. 
She's open to it. <laughs> and she smiles and she laughs. No, I laugh because you're funny. It makes me laugh. <laughs> and I think it's funny, but... And I never know how to answer because it's not that I don't want to have another baby. Right, put it this way. Right? It's if just could, like... I've said to Sarah this right. If, you could, if I could give you a baby right now, a newborn baby that was biologically if you could, If you could guarantee it would be a twins, a right. one girl, one boy, that would be so perfect. And I'd be like, okay. Yeah, but if, you, if I could give you a baby now and you just had to miss the pregnancy stage and the labour, you'd go for it, right? So we've got this, man. We can get through it. If the baby was together. there, yeah. but it's not. But it, but and he keeps saying know, that, and he's like, we can go we through can it. And I'm like, it. yeah, but we're not going through it. I'm going through it's it. Nine months I months have months. sickness that I've got to try and hide on the vlogs. You don't have to hide it. It's cool. That's all I do. I've got the blooming, all the, you know, the, yeah, the labour and... Yeah, but guess who's here? The sleepless nights and the breastfeeding. Who doesn't have to leave to go to work, etc., etc. Who can be here to support you full time. It's proper. Exactly. Me. So... So as you, so that's the answer to that. Um, Chris really, 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 really would like another one, and I keep saying to him, Isla was the last you said, Sarah's and then and then you said Jace was the last, and then you said Mila was the last, and then in flipping a year, eighteen months time, you'll be saying just one more. This one's going to be the last, Sarah and it'll just also, just as FYI, Sarah is also tracking regulation, so you know. She to can't. avoid it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> to avoid it. You know that's the truth. He knows that's the truth. He knows that's the truth. I actually am tracking ovulation to avoid it. And we have been doing that for flipping six months, so I don't know why you're lying. <laughs> Trying to convince yourself. Um, but that's the situation on that. Um, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm ready to have a baby and go through all that sickness. The sickness really, really, really gets to me. And I just hate that feeling and I just... I don't know. Anyway, that's it for today's video. It's going to be about half, probably, oh my gosh, I burped, that's so embarrassing. This is probably going to be like 40 minutes long, so I apologise. Hope you managed to get to the end. If you're still here at the end, thank you. <laughs> um, comment down below, suggestions for next week. I was thinking hopefully maybe doing an Isabel. I know loads of you guys, I know that you all want an Isabel older girls haul. Maybe a stocking haul. Maybe an advent. Oh no, it'll be December by then anyway. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And we'll see you back here next Monday. Bye, guys. Mm.